Hi guys, welcome back to Switched On, and today I'm going to look at a couple of indie games. I spoke about these last week in my weekly update, um, so I thought I'd give them some content, have a little playthrough, see what they're all about. So the first one we're going to have a look at is a game that I picked out as my, or one of my highlights of last week, and that's Skelly Celeste. And this is like a, an indie roguelike game, a bit like Binding of Isaac, uh, where you're sort of clearing out these dungeons. Um, it's very difficult, so I've not got very far on this one yet. I really like the art style though, it's got kind of this, um, obviously very pixelated art style, but it's also got this sort of oldy worldy theme, a lot of the text is sort of very old worldy, but you can see the graphics are very basic, as I say it's sort of compared to um, Binding of Isaac, but a lot more basic. Now when I first looked at this on the store, I thought the graphics would look I'm dead already. I thought the graphics would be really distracting with all the pixels everywhere, but it's actually works perfectly. I've not had any problems of like not being able to pick out enemies, so it's very well done, art style was. Now, so you've got to clear these dungeons out. You've got a basic axe attack with the B button, and you can fire a gun, which usually I think is the A button but I've mapped it to the right stick, you can um, map it to the right stick. And you've got a dash. Um, you've got a dash on the Y button as well to get out of those situations, which I don't probably think I use enough, which is why I die so much. But the interesting mechanic here is you can't fire your gun unless you've got ammo, and you can only get ammo from using your axe attack, so it really encourages you to mix up your attacks obviously the gun's useful for keeping people at distance but you can't just spam it so use the dash mechanic there but I'm now out of bullets so I can't use my gun and it's not you don't even get like one bullet per hit I don't think I think it slowly like builds up maybe half a bullet at a time so there you go, so that's the first room cleared. As you saw, uh, I've, I've played a couple of games and each of these um, dungeons were looking slightly different. This one's got these spike traps around it. Uh, but say each time I started it, they did look slightly different. So you open up this portal and between each level, you get to add uh, an upgrade as sort of similar kind of things in, in other roguelike games. So what should we go for? Axe kills, blesses, forfeits, third axe strikes. Only for the skill resurrections. Okay, we'll go for this axe upgrade. So, stage two. but you really do need to use that dash mechanic to get the heck out of dodge. Some enemies take a couple of hits to kill as well. And you see that's a, a, a glowing blue thing down there. That is actually an upgrade. And you see the problem I'm having now, and now I'm dead, is by not clearing those mobs out quickly, they just keep coming and coming and coming. And in the end, you just get overwhelmed. So 625, you've got a multiplier in the bottom left-hand corner. The idea is to keep that high. You can get upgrades that start you off on a on a high multiplier right from the beginning. Yeah, if you if you're a fan of difficult games, then you probably really like this. Um, don't know what upgrade I've got here. A clown mask. Again, like stuff like Binding of Isaac. Never quite sure what these upgrades do. Some actually do you harm. As well as good. Now when I was playing this in the week, I've had this code uh, a few days and I've put in some time already. I kind of um, kind of got the feeling to cross between Binding of Isaac and Downwell, if you've played Downwell. So you've got that sort of basic look. Oh, got a couple of chests here to start this level. See, this, this uh, upgrade I got there is a 50-50 chance of either doubling or halving the damage you take each time you take damage. So you know, it's kind of a good and bad upgrade. But 
I know a few of um, my subscribers quite like these hard games, so I think they'll be well at home with this. Control wise, um, even though it is really difficult and I do die a hell of a lot, I never felt like the controls let me down. So that's really good. The controls are really tight, feel really responsive. And um, Generally, I, li I like it. I don't know why I like it, but I do. Um, so what we got here? Boost bullet damage. Axe swipes become speedy. Start these stages with a splendid surprise. That sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. So yeah, we're going to get a pick up or a buff on every level. Ah, oh, see already, look, there's so many enemies. I've got no bullets. Surrounded. I really want that buff there because that's like a old school smash TV shield. Shouldn't even be that hard because the enemies do kind of telegraph their attacks. So I don't know. Really should be uh, taking more care. <laughs> oh, and pressing the right buttons. So those big creeps hit you pretty quick. <laughs> Dead again. Have a couple of more goes. Let's do. Um, what should we do? Do like ten minutes on this one, and then I've got another game to show you after that. So what's that? So that was a ten multiplier pickup. So these fire bombers are swines. They sort of generate fire and lob fire grenades at you. That guy there, he's quite good. He's like carries around some other sort of grenade, but if you can hit him before he throws it, then he kind of drops it behind him and it destroys anything that's behind him. So that's really useful if you can time that right. You can um, do damage from it. quite interested to see other reviews. I don't tend to look at other reviews, especially when I'm reviewing a game myself. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how other people found the difficulty level. In general, I'm not great at games, but I just enjoy playing a wide variety of them. Ooh, look at the bullets I've got. That must have been a pickup. There's been a buffer box stacked with bullets. Okay, that's not too bad. I only lost half a heart. So what do we got? Uh, home, home, I don't know, home in ammo. Impart state three percent chance of avoiding hurt suffered. Begin a feat stage supply with soul bombs. Let's go with homing gun. That could be useful. So these little chests, they just, uh, these little urns, they don't do anything, they just get in the way. So you see there that um, white bomb. Sort of managed to hit it off of the enemy and he dropped it behind him and killed a couple of demons. Yeah, the homing gun's good. Like that. And they, again now, oh, sh showboating and uh, got hit. Oh, hit by a big creepy thing. The score bottom left there, uh, you can see, tells you your position on the scoreboard for that run. So, fourth overall. It's only a local scoreboard, I don't think there's an online leaderboard. That's a good gun, what I just picked up. Yeah, I'm not sure how the graphical style will come across on YouTube because when I first saw the video like I saw in the eShop it looked like there's just so many pixels that you wouldn't be able to see what was going on but it's very cleverly done the artwork I mean, there's absolutely no problem in making out anything on the screen you can actually, I think there's a lot of options, I'll have a look in a sec but um, I think there's a lot of options to tone down the amount of pixels that are on the screen as well oh, here's like a boss 
bullet hell as he fires into you. Ah, oh, no. Oh, poor dodging. But yeah, you sort of get a chance of either getting a portal at the end or a, or a boss there. Right, one more go. Let's have a look. So we've got a big chest. That'd be interesting to start with. Although it was booby trapped and an enemy jumped out, so that's not great. But I think this is um. I think it might only be like six pounds. I think it's from Digerati Distribution, who have done some great games on the Switch. I'm really loving their output. They did um, Monster Slayers, which is like the, the Slay the Spire type game, the card collecting or card drafting game. They've done Super Blood Hockey, which, okay, I didn't personally get on with, but um, it's got a lot of really good reviews. So, yeah, they're sort of killing it with their indie games at the moment. One of the uh, develop, uh, publishers that I look out for. Home in ammo again, that seems to work quite well. It's a nice big mob. When they come at you sort of in a big group and you can tempt them a little bit of a distance away, they're kind of grouped together and you can sort of just swipe away at them. That was going to be a good kill because it was like a white bomb landed in the middle of a group. But yes, when they come sort of individually and circle you, that you have all sorts of problems. So I've unlocked a pumpkin head, but I'm not sure what that's doing. I'm sure there's some clever Wikipedia somewhere that oh, that um, lists what all these items do. I think there's actually let's have a look. Let's go back to the menu. There's enough of me getting killed. So the setting, so you got something about Halloween. I don't know if that's been a legacy thing left in from the PC game at the time. Sorry for hitting the mic there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There was also, I saw in the trailer while I'm looking at this, there's like a card collecting game as well, but I haven't got that far yet. Hope I do get there because it looked quite interesting. So you've got lots of different display options here. You can sort of have different um, effects on the screen, CRT effect. A mini map, let's put that on, that might be quite nice. Let's put some CRT display on. But yeah, you've got floor decorations here, like the pixels that I was talking about. You can go less normal um, if it's getting too distracting, but I find it fine. I quite like the graphical style. Controls, as I say, starts off uh, with shooting on the A button, uh, which kind of was a bit of a pain because you kind of had to use the left stick to aim and try and run away, so you can change that to the right stick, which is fine. Also consider putting dodge on the right stick, so you can sort of just dodge away quickly in direction, but I didn't. So we have got characters, so cranium ornaments, this is what I'm looking at, so pumpkin tree. It doesn't tell you what it does, but I guess it means that you can start with it, maybe. It's been with these roguelike games, they never come with like an instruction manual, so you're never quite sure what does what. And I guess that's half the fun, is finding out. So there is like um, a... Yeah, compendium. Atomography. That's the only screen. Diab Diablonica. I'm not sure what that is. Beastery. So we have all the monsters that you can kill. And there's this card collection thing, which I saw in the trailer. I don't know whether they're just like achievements. I have to look into that to find out what they are. Finally, got like a stats page. There's different levels as well, so let's just have a look at that. So you've got this uh, Leichmenter Hunt, 
uh, that they suggest you start with. Then there's different levels here once you beat those. So this is a dungeon pilgrimage, redeem a damned soul from the perdition labyrinth. That's a hidden one, hidden one. Clash for cards. So I wonder if it's just a separate card separate card game. I thought it was more tied in with the actual game, sort of between levels, maybe you get to play a card game to, to get buffs or something, but it looks like it's a separate game. Each player is given five random cards, takes turns placing one of their cards on by a table. The objective is to capture more cards than the opponent wants more cards are placed. Each card has four power values to capture a card. The must place a card adjacent to an enemy card, and the power value beats thy opposite value by a sinful sized lion to rekey. Okay. Yeah, this is like a variation on, a, on an old game, I'm sure. That looks like it could be quite fun. So, yeah, take another look into that. But I'm going to carry on working through a review. Going to put some more hours into this one before I review it. See if I can even get past the first level will be handy. Um, but yeah, look out for that. I just wanted to showcase it because I did promise I'd be looking at it. And uh, thanks to Digirati for sending the code over. I've been able to, to have a closer look at it. So I'm going to jump into another game now. We're going to jump into Gunlord X, which is another game I said that I'd be looking at. Now this one is kind of a remake of an old game called Turrican, uh, which was on the Amiga and was also remade on lots of other platforms actually, but there was a Super Turrican came out, I believe on the SNES, but I played all my version on the Amiga. So we'll go back to stage one. So this is like a 2D platform run and gun. Lots, it's a huge, huge area, very old school gameplay. Secrets already, as you can see. So we're using your radial gun here to find hidden platforms. But it's a uh, yeah, really tough game, like the levels, I think took me obviously multiple tries but I think to actually run the first level end to end took about 15-16 minutes you get three lives top left hand corner of your lives but then when you die you do sort of I mean, you only go back to a checkpoint so you don't it's not too frustrating the point you have to like restart the level oh there's diamonds up there Sort of great old school music as well, like really reminds me of the Amiga. And sort of some games they, they remake to look like retro games. I would think from playing this game that it almost feels like playing an emulator. It's that sort of old school. It's not sort of like, oh it just looks a bit old school, but here's like a load of modern modern touches to it. This actually just feels like it could have been an Amiga game. And I think I'd say that as a compliment. Certainly not a detriment to it because you know the Amiga was an amazing platform. So you got this you've got your standard gun which you can upgrade. You've got the beam weapon which can take out anything but uses energy at the bottom of your screen. Although to be fair, I use it a lot and I don't run out of energy, so that's cool. And you've got this roll move that lets you get into small areas and you see the little secret areas and then you've got kind of this smart bomb type um, clearance you can also activate a shield as well if you find the right power up now between levels um, certainly on the second level of this particular run through there's even like a, a side scrolling shoot map so it sort of changes from this platforming runner gun to uh, a nice 2D shooting up like our type. So yeah, really good. Another game that's really good value, I think this one might be around £10, I think. But they actually uh, the oh god. The developers actually made this game for the Neo Geo, I think. 
way, wasn't even way back in the day, but you know, considering the Neo Geo has been dead for years and years, it was actually an original game they made for that. I'm sure someone will correct me, but I'm also seem to remember that they might have made a Dreamcast version. Again, many, many years after the Dreamcast had, uh, had died a death. So this is kind of a remake of that version that they made for those platforms that you know pretty much nobody would have played. Only the hardcore collectors. Oh! Even like the sort of synthesized voice in the game as well, very much like an Amiga game. It's just awesome. If you like your retro games, and as I say, this, this almost feels like an emulator game, then I'm sure you're going to really dig this one. A lot of secret areas, lots of things to find and unlock. But like I say, it's, it's that old school gameplay of big levels, three lives. And you see here, I died, so I've gone back a little bit, but not too far. It's not cost me too much time. There's a nice secret up here, if I remember rightly. You sort of make your way oh, up this platform. I'm sure there's another platform. Oh yeah, there's like a, a like a beast with a claw. You have to try and get him to grab you to pull him up to, to pull you up to that big diamond. But I think I'd um, lost that chance. Turrican itself would be a perfect game for the the Switch. I don't even know who would own the license for that anymore. But there was another game as well that was on the Commodore called Retrograde. And that was kind of like a precursor to Turrican. And I love that game. I know a couple of uh, subscribers are big fans of the Amiga as well, so shout out to you guys. It's always worth checking with the beam, just checking around to see if there's any any platforms around. Perhaps one thing I would say is that maybe they should have made the cost of using the beam a little bit higher than it is. As I say, you can pretty much spam away with it. Yes, it costs you some energy, but that energy refills pretty quickly. I'd like, to, like for it to be more of a sort of a last gasp weapon or something you have to use in special situations. But as you see, you can pretty much wail away with it without too much consequence. I won't do too much longer on this, just a couple more minutes and then um, call it a day. advantage of the beams you see there it sort of goes through platforms as well so you can kill stuff that you're going to be moving into where your gun here doesn't go through the platforms the beam does so yeah if any of you played Turrican give me a shout below let me know what you think about how this one might compare from what you've seen 
if you've picked this one up, what do you think of it? And also Skelly Celeste, if you're a fan of those. Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, uh, Nuclear Throne. How do you think that one might compare? There's also another game that came out recently, I think, called Blazing Beaks, that's kind of in the same kind of vein. How popular those uh, type of roguelikes. Kind of trapped. Oh, yeah. But I think we will end it there anyway. Um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, let's pause that. And say, leave me a comment below and subscribe if you um, haven't already subscribed. It'd be really cool and a thumbs up. But um, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.